Mm, so moving ahead, guys. Um, something interesting that we saw this week is the Q1 and Q2 results have been finally, finally released what results? by uh, the KNBS. Okay. <laughs> In last position. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we've, we've, I think we've said this on the podcast that, yeah. you know, this is long overdue. We really needed to see this earlier on. Mm. You know, when you're seeing other com- countries that are probably unstable and in civil war releasing their, their Q3 results yeah. and you as Just in Kenya, you, you haven't seen your Q1 yourself. results, you're wondering what is happening. So when you look uh, at, the, at the Q1 results and Q2 results, um, this is now Y on Y. Mm-hmm. Um, Eonia, yeah. you find that the economy grew by 0.7% for Q1, Y on Y. Um, previously, if you look at the growth from 2020, the growth from 2019 to 2020 was around 4.4%. That is in Q1. Mm-hmm. When you come to Q2, it was 10.1%. Mm-hmm. This is still on Y on Y. I'm saying Y on Y because there was a battle on Twitter about <laughs> Y on Y and M on M. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so that was... What is Y on Y and what is M on M? Man, month on month, month on month, uh, and year on year. Okay. So, if you look at the second quarter, which grew by ten point one percent, if you go back to look at Q two of last year, yeah. the growth was actually negative at mm-hmm. around four yeah. percent. So this was good. If you if you look at some of the sectors that really stood out, education really really stood out at yeah. around sixty seven percent. Yeah, I did not get that. Schools. You did not get schools. Schools, schools were closed last year. Yeah, because yeah, but well, as many schools opened, like private schools. No. I mean, because are you using public institutions to? If you look at last year and this year, yeah. Last year at at last year in Q2 was when COVID, you know, had really really struck the yeah, country, yeah, and schools, yeah. of course, were closed. Mm. So the whole school economy, so to speak, you know, guys, guys, we even sell books. Guys, we even sell school uniforms, you know, revenues in schools and everything. Suppliers of food. Absolutely. Uh, you know, the cabbage and maragwe uh, farmers. Which school is that? Hey, bougie. Bougie, oh, we are sorry. What? You do not relate. Hey, <laughs> hey. Hey. hey, Easter. Anyway, but it's yeah, okay. because kids, kids are home for since April. Yeah. Yeah. And I think they only went Up to around October, November. Yeah, yeah, October. Yeah, so yeah. there was a, that is 10 minus 3. Makes sense. So yeah, so job. that that's that's why you know you could see that the the education sector you know sixty seven percent growth. Yeah. Um, if you look at um, manufacturing, did nine point six percent. That was really really good. Mm. And uh, I'd really love to know why done manufacturing. Of course, COVID. But then I'm also I'm trying to find other reasons. Companies are closed, Kigan. Yeah, I'm 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 just trying to find other reasons apart from COVID. Because, you know, interestingly, pre-COVID in 2019, in 2018, our yeah. economy was not in its best position. Um, yeah, I think it's a whole, when COVID ends and there was a lot of, I think banks were also quite nice to people. Yeah, in lending. Uh, in lending, uh, you find banks such as Equity, uh, James Mwangi, for instance, come, coming out to say that he really wants to reduce the allocation of capital that is in government deposits and the fact that equity is not a lazy bank yeah, i love that yeah, statement yeah it does not oh. yeah it does not want equity to be a lazy bank yeah. where they yeah. only take deposits and in, in, invest in and government give paper come, and yeah, give it to, yeah, yeah so you find if a bank takes such a stance then there's more capital uh, afford, uh, afforded to businesses mm. and so they're able to like grow and expand yeah. so yeah. that is part of the reason i guess also um I think that's the the, big, the biggest reason, and then generally to new opportunities or a new feeling of growth yeah. after the pandemic. Also, psychologically, it usually plays a part in terms of saying, "Okay, we are just going to go harm in terms of increasing our output uh, and capacity." I think the fact is that COVID was the biggest um, deterrent or yeah, sure, inhibitor of growth mm-hmm. at that time, yeah, yeah. in 2020. Because mm-hmm. first of all, you don't have as much input yeah. in terms of labor and materials and all that. The another thing, your markets are closed. Where you supply yeah. the markets, yeah, whichever market it is that you supply, whether it's exports or local markets, yeah. they're closed. Boundary borders, or okay, that was not really a factor because goods were not. But also yeah, supply chain. chain. Yeah. If you look at transport, yeah, supply, supply chain, chain yeah. issues. Yeah. 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 Transport, so, transport did sixteen point nine percent growth. Yeah. You know, this is at the backdrop of what you're just saying. You know, yeah. movement and and borders, cessation of movement and everything. Yeah. 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 You know, as much as the borders were not closed with regards to movement of goods, you could still see what happened in the Malaba border, for example. Mm-hmm. Tra- track 
driver staying there for two weeks yeah. you know, at it to be tested and all and i think that's the so time covid we had, we had the lockdown in q2 COVID. yeah we, we we had the lockdown in q2 yeah that that whole you can't move between counties for instance so the matatu industry for instance was dead a long distance matatu oh there's journey. such a time i'd forgotten yeah, there's a time that, you could not get into another county yeah so I'm like, forgotten <laughs> <laughs> so with all that now uh, being reopened yeah. uh, so that's why transportation and storage grows by 16% mm. yeah and if if you but just ICT ICT grew by 25% yeah i saw i saw and i was struggling to to look at you know information and communication and i was i was, I was trying to look at is it uh, you know the way they presented it yeah. at KNBS yeah. you know i was split are they talking about media are they talking about you know are they talking about the ict space but largely uh, I, for me i honestly expected that ict grew more in 2020 than 2021 that yeah. that, that, yeah. that was my yeah. feeling as well um so i do <laughs> But maybe it's the you see the way um growth the way it operates in an economy where there is a lot of growth at a certain period mm. and then it it triggers another growth like growth on top of growth. Mm-hmm. You get what I'm saying? So if you look at uh for example the IT sector, you know, it's for example product that builds on products. Mm-hmm. Okay? So if you have guys buying a lot of laptops you know this would mean also growth for repairs of laptops yeah. and also growth for accessories of laptops yeah, yeah. you know mm-hmm. mouses keyboards and whatever such and it's such it's called it's called the compounding element of growth absolutely so growth mm-hmm. being a com- that being that growth compound mm-hmm. you grow one sector i mean there's a whole economic um mantra sort of mm-hmm. that that if you want to the, to accelerate the growth in the economy you mm-hmm. go to one particular um sector which you think has more linkages and all that yeah. then now to create a, a ripple effect <laughs> yeah. but then but then you look at it kalia you look at ICT one of the reasons why it still grew in 2020 is because many companies are largely still in working from home mm-hmm. and you know this requires you know people when even when people are recruited you know buy new laptops and the like so you look at the whole ICT space and you know now the thing about cyber security and the likes mm-hmm. so if you look at consultancy in the cyber security space and an online fraud space is really really growing and if you look at linkedin you know there are even um, a lot of polls i think i come across a poll a day mm-hmm. saying how how would you like to work in 2022 is it at home do you want to go back to the office or do you want a mix of both so i think working from home is still big you know yeah, yeah. and probably there are some schools um some high end schools who are still doing um schooling from home you know not going back to school physically mm-hmm. yeah and if you think about it as well um if you are to look at especially many of the listed companies if you have to look at their financial reports for the year f- uh, 2020 yeah. most of them said they are they have become more lean operationally mm-hmm. so become more efficient and they've achieved this by investing more in uh, ICT and the and digitization of the of the company yeah. uh, the whole uh, ICT innovation that most companies are adopting yeah. so i think there's been a lot of investment also by the corporate especially in the space. banking sector yeah in the banking sector yeah, 96% of all the transactions in the Kenyan banking sector are, are off are off branches yeah so i think this whole investment um and then coupled with what you said um the way there are so many layoffs uh in the previous q2 yeah. and many people are losing jobs and now businesses coming on board and facilitating their people with uh, laptops you know internet connectivity yeah uh, more firms going back i think to paying for internet in the yeah. office and yeah. that kind of thing yeah. um because if you're paying for internet in the home most likely you're still going to continue paying internet at home yeah anyway, but then yeah. the business ones i think f- if they move they move to working from home either they reduce their tariff or the amount that they're paying and that kind of thing so that um could be the reason also why ict has grown or shot up by, yeah. that, by that when level. when you mentioned about people working from home being a factor that contributed to ict growth yeah i was so hesitant to buy that because i mean it doesn't feel from where i said it doesn't feel like most kenyans are working from home there are definitely more Kenyans working from home as compared to pre-covid times yeah. but it's not yeah such i mean a if, 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 you look, if you look if you look at the about, labor market currently of yeah. course there are way more people working you know physically in their yeah, job areas exactly, than than at home exactly. yeah. Yeah. so even the polls the linkedin polls i've seen them but you see linkedin is is, is a really a global platform 
Yeah. And so those might not be those are polls that might not be directed to this jurisdiction. Yeah, that's that's, that's very Could true. Could be another yeah. jurisdiction. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I would go with. I think Kalia said it, and even yourself. Yeah. That this is ICT growth in growth was in terms of services, service yeah. pr- provision, yeah. financial services mostly. Mm-hmm. We talk about M-Pesa, mobile money services, mm-hmm. and. Um, banks also going digital. Yeah. What what's the figure you, s- you mentioned? Is ninety nine percent? Yeah, this is from uh, Dr. Njoroge, your Must friend at the CBK. Ninety six percent of ninety six. That's yeah. like a hundred. 